there's something about him where when you get close to him, you, you, you feel warm. You, you, you feel like, like you've known dad for a while. With that smile, the way he approaches you, talks to you, and so on. So going up to DC, you would imagine you would have to change just because, you know, you got to protect your turf. You got to fight for what you want, for what your constituents want. And, and he did it differently with his compassion and with his aloha. It is a world of survival. It is a world of Machiavellian, uh, you know, style leadership. And uh, for him to be able to come with his calm and, and, and sometimes serene uh, approaches to problem solving and to negotiating uh, compromises, uh, I think was an astounding achievement on his part. And yet I always believe it takes one to make a difference. And, uh, and so for 36 years, I've tried to do that. The Historic Hawaii Foundation is proud to honor Senator Daniel Akaka as its 2012 Kama'aina of the Year. Daniel did that all through his political life. He never forgot where he came from. Dad was a baby, and he was the one that would get the hand-me-downs. You know, the, the family did not have much money, and when it came time for shoes, you know, he wouldn't get the new shoes, but it would be passed down. As each child outgrew a pair of shoes, the next one would get it. Well, by the time he got a pair of shoes, he was so happy, even though they were put on the bottom. He didn't just happen uh, uh, overnight, you know. His uh, his leadership style, his uh, his commitment to values, was uh, was part of a, a, a very long tradition of family ohana behavior. My best beginning role models were my mother and dad. We call them Ma and Pa and they really brought up our family in a spiritual manner. And it made a difference in all of our lives, the children of our family. And uh, it inculcated in us that, that we were here on earth to help people. You know, our family comes from the Valley of Pau'ua. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, where our family lived is called Akakalin. One day he recalls when he was just a young boy and Tutuma was outside saying, Hui, hele mai, mai e ai. Come, come visit. And he said he would yank her dress and say, but mama, we don't have any food to offer. And she'd say, that's okay. Get them water. We're going to sit and talk story. Get to know. Always the welcoming. And I think that really has had an impact on his view. It's important to get to know people. You give what you have. He always wanted us in whatever we did, whether it was eating lunch, walking in the hall, or assisting him with legislation or speech. He always wanted us to be demonstrating the specialness, the uniqueness, and the values of Hawaii. And I tried as much as I could from what I knew and understood about uh, Hawaii and its people to preserve it and conserve it and, and to try to get our younger generation to spend more time in searching this out. By having people learn their culture, embrace their diversity, learn their language, use their language, they would um, 
learn the values and embody the values that leave them no choice but to want to preserve the natural resources and the, and, and the artifacts and the places from which uh, the culture comes from. You know, we have many trailways, many pathways, you know, through all the islands. And one of the, the, the trails that we have on the island of Hawaii, which, you know, the old folks call the Alahele Trail, today called the Alakakai, which is the, the shoreline trail, is one trail that the dad placed on the list of national historic trails. And I felt that trail was so important again to the to Hawaiian history uh, that I preserved that one too and now it's one of the longest trails in the United States. That trail has had more history that has occurred along that corridor than any other trail in the entire national system of trails. You know many things that people don't know about my dad you know, besides, you know, being in the military, you know, he um, gave us all our haircuts. He was a barber as well in the military. Dad was in the service uh, during World War II. He served in the Pacific Theater. And he realized that, you know, the veterans need to be supported. After being discharged, after retiring, that they still need to be supported and not, you know, um, forgotten. When I heard about the tomb of the known soldier um, taking cracks and possibly falling apart, oh, I was very concerned. And I felt that the symbolism of the unknown soldier again in history of America is so important and also it reveals the spirit of the people of, of uh, America and that they are people who sacrifice for the good of, of the country. I think wherever he goes, even in his speeches, he always brings the ohana, the family unit, into what he talks about. Because for him, I think that's the core of, of what he is. It's all about ohana, it's all about family, and it's not just blood family, but extended family. To me, Hawaii is about family and love. Auntie Millie is a very important part of, of, of Senator's success his outlook um, and what he does uh, all the time. I like to think of them as yin and yang. They're so different. Their personalities are like night and day. They were a team. They still are a team. They're a team in everything they did in life. My wife and better half, uh, Millie, uh, is, is very Hawaiian. Uh, her spirit is, is very Hawaiian. You know, mom is pretty straightforward in things she says. And for some reason, the people just love that up in DC, you know. She embraces them, she loves them, she scolds them, she keeps them on the right, she treats them just like they're her children. And she, she creates this mutual respect. You send out love, you get that love. And I always told my children, you know, you're a mirror. When you look at somebody, what they see in your face is what you're gonna see in their face. So if you show them a happy face, you're smiling, you send out your love, you're gonna get it back. And so she's been a very key person in passing on the Hawaiian spirit. Senator Akaka used to tell us a lot that he believed Hawaiians had a very important role to play in perpetuating world peace and that was through the spirit of aloha. He would tell us often, imagine if we behaved with the spirit of aloha and in terms of foreign diplomacy, people could understand and embody those values. Imagine how much more peace there would be. And he said, we have that role, but 
we kind of have to be able to understand it and perpetuate it ourselves uh, before we can rise to the level of being able to uh, play that role at the international level. I really believe that the values of Hawaii and its spirit you know, must be told and others need to be educated in it and others should again feel it and, and for me that's a mission of Hawaii and the people of Hawaii is to take this with them so other people will, will feel that spirit. You know, when Dad does his presentations, and if there's an ukulele at hand, there's one song that he would always end with, and that kind of wrapped up his aloha, his love for, for his island home, for Hawaii, his love for his ohana, for his family, his love for the values which he perpetuates. Where I live, there are rainbows with life in the, in the laughter of morning and starry nights. of the sun I hear children laughing in this place that we love Hawaii the United States of America where we live there are rainbows with life in the laughter of mornings and stars.